KWAM salutes our seniors. Brought to you by Momentum Community Care Services, 875 West Poplar Avenue, Suite 23 in Collierville. Appella, specialized foster care and in-home personal care. To learn more, visit appella.org. Here's Business Spotlight from your local voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. And here's your host, George Bryant. Good morning and welcome to Tuesday. And if uh, you're just tuning in, you know if it's Tuesday, that means we're going to be talking growth with Tracy Strickland of Triumph Bank. Welcome. Well, thanks, George. Good morning. I almost don't feel like I'm in Memphis this morning. This you, weather. Yeah, I know. It's I, cool. There's no humidity. What's the deal? It's incredible. I was. We were sitting out last night, and man, I felt like I needed a sweater on. <laughs> I'm I going, know. This is ridiculous. But man, enjoy it. You know, oh you always gosh. say, yeah. we always say, if it could be like this all the time. But I guess if it mm. was, everybody would live here. Then we wouldn't be excited about <laughs> it when it actually happens. Yeah. It's not probably take it humidity. for granted. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, we're uh, proud to have you here in the studio. Thanks. I do want to say that uh, this segment is a chance for us to uh, shine a spotlight on our great business partner, and uh, that's Triumph Bank. And uh, we've been doing this segment for quite a while now, and uh, it's always something exciting going on. It's a chance mm -hmm. for us to kind of look at the inside personality of how the bank runs. It, it is a local community bank. You guys are celebrating your 13th year. Yes. It's our anniversary month, and as we were talking about, we always love to have customer appreciation days during the month of June. So we have brought in Ben and Jerry's um, for all of our different bank offices. Last week, we were at our Poplar headquarters. Um, if you're in Arlington this Friday from 3 to 4.30, cop, come by on our um, at our branch at um, Airline Road and go see the great people there, including Stephanie Bishop, our, our awesome manager. Um, but we just have, we, we celebrate all through June, and um, we're so thankful um, to be here and to be serving our customers. And I love this opportunity. We always talk about this opportunity where we get a chance to meet our team members a little yep. bit more intimately and, and get to know them. And part of the, the big growth at Triumph this past year um, has been our expansion into the Middle Tennessee market. Um, right. And I don't think um, enough um, can be you know said about you know how we love being in Memphis, um, we actually now, um, our special guest today is Kent Stone. He is our Middle Tennessee mortgage manager, and he actually started his mortgage career here in Memphis, moved to Nashville just a few years ago. So um, we have, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you're like, well, Kent's not there. Well, he's calling in. So, Kent, are you with us this morning? I am, Tracy. George, good to be with you this morning. Hey, Kent. Uh, welcome to the radio show. I guess once a Memphian, always a Memphian. <laughs> yeah, you know, it. Uh, that's true. And I know that y'all had a lot of publicity recently about the new Facebook commercial down there. And uh, I live mm, in right. Franklin, and uh, I get that. And it, I always hum along to it because uh, it, uh, yeah. I feel like it's speaking directly to me. Walking um, in Memphis? Yes. Walking in that. that was pretty cool national exposure for our little city. But, um, Kim, thanks so much for being on. And um, I know this is your first time to join us on the show. And um, from everything I hear from your Nashville co cohorts to your Memphis cohorts who worked with you when you were in Memphis say, Kent is literally the best. He's the only mortgage guy I'll go with. And we have a ton of great mortgage um, team members um, here at Triumph. But, um, Kent, you you are leading the way for our Middle Tennessee market. And I always think it's interesting. Um, I've been in the financial services industry my whole career, banking only for the past, like, five and a half, six years. Um, but you didn't start in the banking industry. Can you talk to us a little bit about your background and how you first got involved um, with mortgage? Yeah, absolutely, Tracy, and uh, I appreciate the kind words my uh, <laughs> cohorts say about me, and uh, <laughs> I try to live up to them as much as as well as I can. Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't come out of college and go directly into banking. I uh, went to work for uh, some family friends uh, out of college and uh, worked in the food service equipment industry, which was uh, kind of interesting. We uh, I worked for a company that sold. I was very specialized, and we sold uh, 
self-serve ice cream equipment, yogurt equipment, margarita mm-hmm. machines, and uh, the like of specialty food service equipment. So it I, I came kind of in a roundabout way. Uh, I had a friend of mine who uh, – was uh, the city president of a bank down in Memphis, and uh, this was about 2006, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and said he needed a mortgage person. And, uh, you know, at the time, it uh, just kind of changed over the years, but at the time it was more or less a sales position, With uh, and you had to learn, obviously, some financial, uh, you know, kind of background information, Mm -hmm. but it was largely a sales position, so... I got into it that way and uh, been doing it ever since, and it was the best career move I ever made because I really, really love what I do. Well, and it's so so visible anytime you're in. When I've when I've come up to your Brentwood office, and I'd love hearing you talk because you get really excited, and yeah, you can hear the passion in your voice when you're talking with your customers. And um, I just, you know, we were we were talking the other day when, and I didn't realize that you had been in banking 13 years, just like Triumph's been in business for 13 years, but. You and I both know in 2006, you literally started your mortgage business right before the bubble burst and, and the, the stock market tanked. And it was um, not the easiest time, I'm sure, to, um, you know, people weren't buying houses as much and the value of homes were going down. And, you know, how did you, you know, stay the course through all that at the very beginning of well, that part of your career? Yeah, it was uh, it was tough. It was a very uncertain time, and for me personally, uh, it was a relatively new career mm-hmm. at the time when all this happened. And uh, I also had uh, two children in elementary school, mm-hmm. which you know didn't ease the you right. know the angst that wow. was involved during that uncertain time. But uh, it uh, you know I found when after all this happened, nobody in our industry knew what the next steps were going to be. Uh, they, uh, you know, there were, at the time, there were a lot of loan products that were out there. I was Mm -hmm. fortunate enough to be working for a bank where, uh, that wasn't part of our portfolio. So my products didn't change all that much. Uh, but, uh, the only thing that I knew to do was what I, you know, experienced in my career prior was to just keep doing the things that, uh, I had learned to do that made me successful. Uh, in the short amount of time I had been there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just kind of kept working at it and just doing all the same things. And, you know, we were able to come out of it. It was uh, kind of a tough time on my family because I would come home and tell Mm -hmm. them, you know, guys, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what we got going, but we're just going to keep plugging away. And fortunately, things turn around now. You know, several years later, or several months after that happened, uh, there were a lot of changes to the market, which allowed people to start refinancing homes that they had gotten upside down in, which really helped the industry overall. But at mm-hmm. the time when all that happened, we didn't know that was coming, and it was very uncertain. So uh, we were I was lucky to see my way through. There were a lot of people in my industry didn't make it through that. Oh, I know they didn't. Well, and I think that... You know, seeing how you care for your customers now and in your whole service model, I think speaks to you living through that experience because you, you know, came out on the other side because you figured it out really quickly that you've got to go above and beyond, you know, to work with the customers to be able to find creative solutions to help them, um, you know, reach their financial goals. And in this case, you know, buy a home, refinance a home. Um, you know, be stable financially. So I think that speaks volumes to where you are and how you were able to to grow your business. Um, so you started in Memphis. Um, when did you make the move over to Nashville? Well, it was, uh, let's say, 2014, the summer of 2014. Okay. I was very blessed down in Memphis to work with a great uh, bank down there and a great group of folks. Uh, and uh, the bank where I was working after uh, after I left First Bank uh, was large into big into private client banking, mm-hmm. and uh, it was I was very mm-hmm. fortunate to to uh, make that career move, and that was in 2017, mm-hmm. or excuse me, 2011, and. Uh, I had a great group of people around me. Uh, one of my great teammates up here, Rachel Murray, who is a private client specialist, mm-hmm. medical banking specialist. She and I kind of made the move up here together, and uh, that made it a lot easier too. But okay. uh, it was it was an opportunity for me because I was moving from uh, uh, solely a loan officer role into a role of being able to actually manage a, a mortgage division in a market. So. 
uh, it was a great opportunity. And like I say, I still get a little teary-eyed at Facebook <laughs> walking a Memphis commercial, but uh, it was a good move for me at the time and happy Absolutely. that I did it. Absolutely. And of course, you can come back and visit us anytime, Kent. So. <laughs> I do every <laughs> Which I know you do. I know. Yeah, well, um, I talk, talking about that service model and, and how you work with your customers, I'd love for you to walk through that because... You know, um, we're always having listeners that are thinking about whether or not they're buying their first home, buying their, you know, fourth home. Um, But when somebody calls you and says, hey, listen, I'd love to um, work through some mortgage options, um, walk through that process, what, what um, what that customer can expect when they call in and talk and start working with you. Well, you know, we like to. I like to talk through it with them. And, uh, you know, I have a particular set of notes that I make to uh, try to figure out what their financial goals are. And, uh, you know, it's, everybody is a little bit different. I mean, we in the mortgage industry, we largely wind up with the same product or the same number of products uh, mm-hmm. in the end. Right. But, you know, how we get there is a little bit different for everybody. Right. So, uh, you know, some clients would like to be able to save their cash and uh, and go with some type of low-down payment option. Mm -hmm. Other clients are looking for long-term savings by putting more money down and reducing their payment, reducing the interest that they pay on the loan. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just like to get a feel for what my clients are looking for, and that way I can start to put the puzzle together uh, for them. And, uh, you know, we... uh, the way that I do it, and people, you know, people that I work with will tell you they hear this out of out of my mouth a lot when we're talking with a new client is uh, something that I stole from Stephen Covey is begin with the end in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, you know, what do you want? What what's the end goal for you? And then once we can establish that, and you know, a lot of people haven't thought of it that way, so it's kind of a process to go through it. Yeah, yeah. But once we can establish that we figure out what the final picture is going to be and then we work our way back to where we are mm-hmm. and that gives when we, once we've done that we have established what the process is going to be what the mortgage loan that they're looking at is going to look like mm-hmm. and uh you know it, it just gives us a good road map once we decide what they want in the end and are able to work our way back to where we are today that's fantastic well when we come back i want you to dig in a little bit more about um, getting those ap- applications in and how you fast track them and get them done quickly for the customer. So we'll be back yeah, soon. Yeah. You're listening to Let's Talk Growth, Triumph Bank, and Tracy Strickland on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. KWAM is saluting our seniors all month long. Here's Jimmy Grubbs, publisher of The Best Times on today's Seniors. Seniors today are not just sitting home and watching television. They're either staying active in business or with family or volunteering. Yet in the past, we thought seniors gave up and went home, but they're out there today. They're by far the most affluent demographics of all. Individuals and firms that do not recognize that are missing a great opportunity. They have the buying power and the time to devote to financial things that are important to them. KWAM salutes our seniors. Brought to you by Meriton. They're improving well-being and promote independence throughout life stages. Call them today at 901-766-0600. ATC Fitness, with locations all over the Mid-South. Find the one nearest you at atcfitness.com. And now back to Business Spotlight on The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Welcome back to Business Spotlight. Today we're turning our spotlight on Triumph Bank. The segment's called Let's Talk Growth with Tracy Strickland. And uh, Tracy, welcome back to the studios. Thanks, George. Well, yeah. We've got a great conversation yes. going on with Kent Stone, our Middle Tennessee mortgage manager. And so, um, Kent, we, we left it at, so you're, you're meeting with those customers and you're obviously, you know, always starting with the end in mind. So once you understand what that customer's goals are, um, how they want to structure their mortgage, Take us from there. They, they, they put in an application, and, and then what are the next steps? Well, uh, you know, our, the way our bank model works, and uh, it, which is a great fit for how I've done things throughout my career, is, uh, you know, it's m- largely relationship-driven. Mm-hmm. 
so uh, the uh, you know we we make ourselves very available to our clients anytime they need us. Now that being said, uh, it is the electronic world we live in, and we have a lot of great tools that you know help our clients get their information to us and exchange information quickly and make it as painless as we can for the client. We, I would typically, after I've had a conversation with a client and see what they want to do uh, and kind of go through, you know, beginning with the end in mind and mm-hmm. working our ba- way back to where we are, they, I would send them a link to an online application okay. so they can fill that out very quickly and conveniently from their home or office. Uh, it takes a few minutes, uh, and it only takes a few minutes, and it gives me a lot of basic information. Well, we have, uh, through our uh, online application platform, we also have document delivery. Mm-hmm. So uh, once uh, when they submit that application, our de- document delivery system will analyze that and then send them a, a brief list of you know, what documents we know that we'll need, and it gives them a platform where they can upload those documents. Uh, most people today have all the documents that I would need for mortgage application somewhere on a computer somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, the system will send them a list, and they can upload those documents through the list. In the meantime, I review that application and give them a more complete list. So by the time they circle back to start uploading documents, I've been through their application, and I give them a list of everything that I think that I might need. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I do, I kind of go overboard yeah. on my list on the front end, but there's a reason for that. Right. It, uh, I look and see anything that I could possibly think of that we'll need because that is the time when the client knows that they're going to be submitting documents. They're, uh, they're already gathering documents up, so any other thing that I think that I'll need, I try to give it to them on the front end, and I found through my career that uh, you know, by giving them a complete list on the front end, it makes the process go so much smoother because I'm not going through individual yeah. documents to say, okay, wait, I'm, I see that I'm going to need this <laughs> or I'm going to need that. Right. And uh, I try to do all that on the front end, and uh, it just really makes the process go so much smoother from there. Uh, oh, yeah. it, uh, I, you know, I really credit that as much as anything for anybody that ever – you know, comments on the uh, the smoothness of the processes, you know, gathering all that stuff on the front end when the client's already looking and, mm-hmm. and knows they're going to have to gather documents always makes it so much easier on them. Oh, yeah. Do everything at once. They're already pulling stuff. Pull it all, you know, and get it done. And then they then you take it from there. And I know that when we were um, you were telling me earlier about your process and you know, you mentioned we would get all those documents early, so then I can fast tra- fast track it. Um, and I said, well, "Man, fast tracking that sounds exciting." But mainly, you try to get it into underwriting as soon as possible, right? Yeah, that's uh, and that is uh, again, uh, all of this is with the goal of, you know, if a client's buying a new home, well, they got mm-hmm. a lot on their mind, and yeah. uh, you know, the whole idea is is to push the mortgage as much into the background as possible and let them concentrate on other things like, you know, getting moved in and, you know, relocating their family or whatever that may be. So, yeah, I try to get all that information in as quickly as possible. Go ahead and get it into underwriting so, uh, so, you know, it, we're done as early as we can. And again, it all goes to making the process comfortable. That's right. Uh, I've got, you know, I think that for, for June, I've got, uh, seven or eight loans closing this month and uh most of them are already cleared to close for oh, the yeah. entire month you're just so, waiting uh, yeah for the closing attorney just waiting on closing date so yeah. they don't they can put me out of their mind as much as possible <laughs> you know for the for the remainder of their time while they're getting ready to make their move right but like when we've had other members of your team on i think the the great part about you know your relationship driven service model is you're following up with them in 30 days and um you you mentioned to me that one of the great things is that you feel like you sometimes are the first person a customer will ever meet in within the triumph organization you're kind of the gateway to introducing them to various members of the team so that we can help them with all of their banking needs talk through that with us on, on how that works so smoothly for you well yeah and it's one of the great things that i uh enjoy and working with Triumph is that uh, it I do feel a lot of responsibility and take uh, great you know honor in the fact that my uh, that I am the first face that the clients will see 
from Triumph, and uh, we've got all these great folks that are sitting down the hall from me that I get to introduce them to. But yeah, we try to you know make them acquainted with the bank. We have a lot of you know a lot of great things to offer, and uh, they uh, you know it, it, there's a lot of responsibility for me and other mortgage lenders at Triumph that we are pretty much the representative mm-hmm. for Triumph. At, you know, as we get started, you know, right. uh, when clients are looking at their or our clients are looking at their banking, you know, it uh, doing a mortgage is something that you know I tell my folks all the time. It's a little meat on the bone. That's the old <laughs> Memphis saying, isn't it? It's the, you know that it's it, a mortgage is an action that we can do to show clients how we can perform as a bank, not only as a mortgage division right. but as a bank. Right. And uh, it. Uh, you know, that's a great responsibility for us and in the mortgage division, and we try to, you know, to honor the rest of the bank by showing them, you know, kind of how our relationship-driven model works. Mm-hmm. You know, Ken, I wanted to add, um, you know, to your, to your strength of the relationship and building, I think it's important for our listeners to just uh, appreciate what a good mortgage person does. Mm-hmm. You know, you make it you know, you're you're checking all the paperwork and trying to check it all out. But at the end of the day, you're bridging that gap between the real estate agent and, you know, the client and, and then again, the underwriters. And if anything goes wrong, you know, I've seen so many times with the mortgage person, if they weren't strong, mm-hmm. uh, the deal could just explode just yeah. because of one little paperwork glitch or mm-hmm. something like that. So I... I think it's uh, very, very important to get you a good mortgage person, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, as almost as important as a, as the agent. Oh, absolutely. And, you know. George, I, you're making me a little anxious. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go back and go. Getting his big head up. I know. Sure everything is on track. I love it. I love uh, no, it. Uh, I mean, you know, as a mortgage person, I think that, you know, you're involved in a lot of high pressure transactions right. you know it they're not all high pressure but there are some out there and uh that uh you know and i think a good mortgage person and a good real estate agent is the one that remains calm mm-hmm. through all of right it. uh you know they're not very many if we do our job on the front end which is very important uh there are not many things that should be going wrong on their loan now obviously there are surprises and you know we run into things all the time that uh, that, you know, we didn't anticipate. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you do a, a good job on the front end of knowing what your client's going to qualify for and getting getting the, the documents early on in the process, you can head off a lot of, a lot of issues. And, uh, again, that goes to, you know, getting everything done as quickly as possible because there are other things that are involved that are not involved in a mortgage loan and in uh, in someone buying a house. I mean, you have inspections, you have, uh, you know, just general right. negotiations going on all through the process, you know, that go on after the contract is signed. So we try to stay out of the way. We like to be like a good umpire in a baseball game <laughs> where uh, you never even notice that we're there. It only if, makes if, the good calls, not the bad calls. That's right, yeah, that's right. right. If, uh, if we do our job well, uh, then you'll hardly even notice we were there. God. Well, you know, we just have a minute or two left, Kent, but I know you were telling me um, the other day that this is actually a really great time to consider refinancing your mortgage. Um, can you speak a couple of words about that right now? Yeah, absolutely, okay. Tracy. I'm glad you brought that up. We, uh, you know, a large part, and what most people think of us as mortgage bankers uh, mm-hmm. is, you know, we help them buy their first home but there are a lot of other things that we do and buying their buying homes is a big part of what we do obviously but uh you know we there are a lot of other things that we can do to help our clients uh and the most prominent one is refinancing uh and right now we're going through a time where uh we've seen a rate drop lately uh refinance activity is picking up and uh it's a great opportunity for clients to to uh to be able to save some money in the long term on their mm-hmm. mortgage. Now, if I've got just another minute or two, I'll explain how that works. So you cut me off when I get to go too long, Tracy. <laughs> I get a we've easy. got about uh, 60 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, for people out there that might think that they need to refinance, the, what they need to look at and what they need to get their mortgage banker to look at, and we'd love to help them, is, with the, is looking at their loan amortization schedule. Mm-hmm. That 
classifies every payment, tells you there are about four columns, tells you what the total payment is, principal, interest, what their balance is, and what the cumulative interest is. Mm -hmm. That is where the secret to whether somebody needs to refinance is found. And if you have a good mortgage banker that can interpret those loan amortization schedules, you can see exactly how much money you can save. I could go on for about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and in the meantime, you know, if somebody is like, man, I really want to know more, um, what's the best re number for them to reach you? Uh, my, I take all my calls on my cell phone. Okay. So I do have an office phone, but uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you the number. <laughs> uh, but my cell phone is 615-521-6470, and that's the best way to reach me. Uh, awesome. And uh, my email address, if someone would like to email me, is kent.stone at triumphmortgage.com. Awesome. Well, we need an hour show to have you back next time because I've loved having you, Kent. Thank you so much for joining us this early in the morning. Thank you, Kent. Thanks, Tracy and George. Y'all have a good day. Appreciate y'all having me on. You right. too. And uh, we'll see you back next Tuesday at 730. Let's Talk Growth with Triumph Bank and Tracy Strickland. You're listening to The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Triumph Bank strives to make banking easy for our customers. You have